Brooklyn Navy Yard. And if anyone is familiar with the Brooklyn Navy Yard, ultimately almost all the men were stricken with mesothelioma decades later, uh, which was asbestos, and that's what took dad's life at 69. I, I, no, I'm sorry, 79, thank you, Bruce. Uh, at war's end, my father realized that pursuing a career as an artist with a young family to support would not be financially profitable. Though he still painted and sold works while he worked at the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, Art Deco was uh, waning in the Art Deco era was really coming to an end at that time. It was my mother, Mildred, who decided that they should go into their own business. She was a saleswoman. She had a gift of salesmanship and was interested in starting a business that they could have together. The reason that you see this is that my mother also wanted to sell art and antiques and collectibles and tchotchkes and all that stuff. And they wanted to be close with the children. So they opened up their store across the street from PS206 on 22nd Street. And my brother and I would go across the street lunchtime. You must remember that lunchtime years ago, you left your house, you went home either for milk and cookies and went back to school within all within a half hour. You were in walking distance. So um, my parents opened up the gift store in order to be uh, hands-on working parents. And that's where we have that. Now, Dad didn't speak much of his childhood or his art. My brother Bart, in 15 months my junior, and I knew little of his talent. The walls of our home were adorned with 19th century oil paintings. There were some of the decos, and we had the basement, which were full of decos, but we never really realized it. Um, over the years, Gust of Antiques became a very well-known store. It moved to larger quarters and larger quarters, and people would go there. It was a go-to store for all kinds of objects of art. Now here was the inside of our living room because there was a picture that I happened to have. We have, I was 10 and a half, my brother was nine, and here we have Diane Schlesinger Johnson and her brother Stephen. We were all very close. My father had built the most magnificent Art Deco bar and um, with glass inside and blue lights, and it was left in the house. Every summer, while they had the store in Brooklyn, they would take two weeks to go antique shopping. And we'd go all through New York upstate to Montreal and Quebec. We did that several summers up until about 1955 when we bought a small house in Maston Lake, upstate New York again, and they opened up a summer antique shop. So here we are. We were a wonderful family. We were very close, and my brother and I really felt that uh, we had, uh, uh, were privileged to have the kind of childhood that we had. We picnicked. Uh, my mother was a gypsy from Europe, and uh, we picnicked in farms, and uh, we stayed in uh, homes that are B&Bs now, but then it was just somebody that hung out at a shingle a room for rent, vacancy, and that's where we'd stay. By 1973, my parents made a decision that turned out to be one of the best of their lives. It wasn't an easy decision. They had to move the business in Brooklyn, sell their home, 
the business upstate New York, which was also a house in Maston Lake, all to the Catskill Bosch circuit, as you know, where it used to be the comedians would come to the Concord and grow singers, and we were maybe uh, uh, five miles away from all the important, all the important businesses. Now, I happen to have found this on the internet of somebody was taking old signs. It was remarkable. Being in Florida, unfortunately, I didn't realize that I would need so many pictures that I had at home. Of my father as a child, as my grandparents young, and I didn't have it. Sharon said, do you have a picture of your grandparents when they were married? I said, no. And if I did, it wouldn't be in Florida. So I'm very sorry, and I apologize for that. Um, it took 20 years until my father decided to pick up his paintbrush again. And there was a, a renewed demand, not only for my father's work, but a resurgence of Art Deco in the 1970s. And I think Sharon had you know, mentioned that, that she understood that. This is a painting episode. My father was in his studio in the lower level of the house. And where he did, he had, he had a studio built, he had the tables built, he had a couch in case he had to go to sleep. Martin has the same deal <laughs> here in <Right>. Florida. <laughs> the house was a museum. Whoever walked into the house because they thought they were going to buy an antique or picture stayed for hours. My mother fed them, my father told them stories, and this is only part of the library. Actually, this was taken after some of the books were gone. We were starting to sell things, and we needed photographs. Uh, there were books of all, all kinds, mythology, ter interpretations of the Koran. And they had a very close and dear friend, Mentka Katz, a Nobel laureate, who described my father so perfectly Gustav, uh, he described him to a journalist, Gustav is always walking the mountaintops, but he knows what's going on in the streets. Now, here we have something that Sharon asked me to explain. The original Gatsby in 19... And I had missed, I, I seem to have missed that picture on here. Was painted um, after F. Scott Fitzgerald's classic book, um, The Great Gatsby, thank you. And my father painted this, and this was his signature painting in the 1930s, 1940s. By the time he started a renewal of his art, he went back to many of his original works and repainted them. So it was a recreation that was more contemporary and deeper colors and the lines were a little different. If you could see that, what, what, he, what he has there. Also about that period, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the media metho methodology. As a young artist, Dad developed multifold symphony of watercolors and uh, painted on board. He always said, left something out when we asked him. It was a secret. Never told us everything. But his colors were vivid and great golds and blues. And uh, it was an expression of insight and movement, he said, which seek to convey the wonder of the image. These are some things that I had from his studio. He had hundreds, if I say right, it was hundreds of bottles and jars of paints. It was very difficult to get rid of them all. And there is his original palette in the right-hand corner. Now, my father had his bird years, like artists have their blue years, their red years, or whatever. He had that in, in, originally he painted birds, but these, 
in the 70s and 80s, he really got into these birds. In the middle, we have Celestial. And Dad didn't always write his reflections of art, what was very upsetting. There might only be around a dozen of his works where he wrote what his mindset was, what he thought of, and what it meant. And Celestial is beyond the horizon of the mind. Here we have Blue Rhapsody, which different things inspired my father. It could be a rock singer, or here we have uh, Rhapsody in Blue. He loved to listen to classical music and opera while he was painting. He actually played the violin when he was younger, but as life would have it, stopped. And here is Call of the Sea. And he says there's a loneliness in the sea that has affinity with the loneliness of the soul. So now we have Chana. Chana is named after his favorite granddaughter, Ava Chana, which was a gift to Ava. And that was in 1981, she was about 14. Now, when my parents moved to Monticello, they became well known. They were, they were like the uh, Hollywood, a Hollywood famous. There wasn't a week that um, Chris Follickers or other journalists wouldn't be writing about them. My father was doing shows and exhibited Playboy, uh, the Coliseum, and my mother also, in her own right, had um, many articles written about her. Mildred and Gus. Now, it says 1982 because I think when I did this, that was the picture that I had of my father. It happens that my mother in that picture was 73 years old. So she was born in 1913, and she did have an absolutely beautiful smile. Now, I have to get this right. A journalist wrote that Mildred and Gus were like yin and yang, but he never knew which was which. They were complimenting each other. 